Hello guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Lone Vic and today it's a how to play time for Astra from Mind Clash Play, this younger brother of Mind Clash Games, let's say. So Mind Clash Games got us used to releasing games that are big, that are huge, that are complex Euro games that are real brain burners. And now they've created Astra, which is a very quick, very nice to play game for two to five players about discovering constellations in the night sky. So I totally forgot that I've ordered this and it arrived surprisingly at my doorstep this October. And now, well, here we are with a how to play video for two to five players. So let's dive in and let's see how to set it up and how to play Astra for those player counts. If you like the video, if you found it helpful in any way, and if you want to support my channel and what I'm doing here, Lone Vic, you can click the like button under the video, hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell to be notified about new content coming up to my channel regularly, at least two times a week. And right now, the setup for Astra. So to set up Astra, we need to do the following things. Give each player a journal and a marker in their color. Take out this main board and flip it to the side with the player count. So we have here a two player board and a three player board on the other side. And then the box has a bigger four and five player board. So I'll be setting up a two player game. So let's leave it at that. Create a pool of stardust somewhere in the corner next to the board in everybody's easy reach. So I will place it off screen basically. And to start off the game, give each player eight crystals of stardust and place them here. Also create a pool of those telescope tokens and place them somewhere nearby. I will also place them off screen. Give each player one turn sequence card and there is a side for two player games and a side for three and five player games. So place it accordingly. Take the final scoring cards and Ask each player to draw one for them and place it near their player board. On the other side, we will have a table for scoring at the end of the game. So I will take one and place it here. And finally, take all of these constellation cards, give them a good shuffle, and depending on the player count, do the following. So if you are playing a two-player game, take 29 cards from the top and place them as a deck near the play area. Take the game end card and place it across this deck and then place the remaining 19 cards on top. And if you are playing a free player game, then 25 cards should go below the end game cards and 23 cards should go above it. If you are playing a four player game, you put 18 cards below and 30 cards above the game end card. And in a five player game, you place 11 cards below and 37 cards above the game end card. So let's say that I have 19 and 29 below and 19 on top for a two player game here right now. Take one card from the top to begin a discard pile and looking at the symbol on the discarded card, place the turn marker on the correct symbol on the play board over here. So I will just place this discard pile somewhere here off screen because it doesn't matter anyway after the game and then take as many cards as you have these triangles around the board here and place those cards next to those triangles so that they are available for the players. So in a case of a two player game, three undiscovered constellations will be available at the start of the game. And that's the whole setup, ladies and gentlemen. The first player token should be handed out to the player who is going to be, well, the first one. And this is how the first player token looks like. And there is one more thing. If you are playing a two player game, you need one additional marker for the automated player that you need to add. If you are playing a three, four or five player game, you don't need an extra marker. 
Okay, so now let's talk about the main concepts of the game. Let's take talk about the game overview. So in Astra, you will be uncovering constellations on the night sky by marking those stars in the constellations with your color of the marker. And if a constellation is entirely marked by any players in any combination, so no empty stars on the card, the player who was the last to mark something on this constellation will get the card and will get points at the end of the game for this and the other players will get some bonuses for participating in uncovering the star. And the game follows until you uncover the game and card in this deck and that triggers the end game which means that you finish the turn that you are currently in until the first player and then you do one more round and then calculate the points. So the constellation cards have a few elements that you need to remember. There is the element here in the corner which corresponds to one of the four elements on this track on the game disc let's say. There is a number here on the dark, dark area which tells you how many stars are there in a constellation. There is the victory point number which will be important at the end of the game. Each card also has an ability which will be usable by the person who collects the card and then there are rewards for participation in uncovering the constellation. And on your journal, you also have the victory point track where you will be marking the victory points during the game and at the end of the game. You have the place for your stardust and this number tells you how many stardust you will have to fill up your pouch with once you do the rest action. This track is called the Wisdom track and it tells you how many cards you can collect and use. And you also have the telescope storage here for the telescope tokens that you collect during the game. Okay, so let's right now talk about the turn sequence in the game. So once it is your turn as a player, you go through four phases in your turn. And if it is a two player game, there will be a few changes to how a three, four or five player game plays. And I'll be talking about those as well. So first phase in every turn is the ability phase. So if you have any cards here already collected below your journal, in this first phase of your turn, you can tap any of those cards, put them from vertical to horizontal position in order to mark that they were used and launch the ability of the card. Now there are two types of abilities. Some have the keyword instantly, which means that you perform this ability immediately after you tap the card. And those abilities are described pretty well, so I won't be going into detail into any of those. And some of those abilities have the this turn keyword, which means that after you tap this card, you have this ability as a passive ability for the whole turn that you are taking right now. And those cards will untap a bit later. I won't be telling you about this right now. So this is the ability phase. This is the first phase of the game. Now the second phase is called the action phase and in the action phase you decide which one of two actions you'll be doing. The first action that you can do is observe and observing means that you take your marker, you take a look at the available undiscovered constellations and you observe one of them. You mark the number of stars equal to the number of stardust crystals that you want to spend but there are a few rules. If the constellation has not yet been marked by anybody, you need to mark your first star as this one which is encircled on the constellation. So this is the starting star in each constellation. And you also have to pay one stardust for this one. And after you mark this one, you can mark any consecutive star that's linked to the one forming a chain. So you can't branch out. If I mark this as my first star and pay one crystal during my observation round, I can go down this road or this road. So if I go here, I pay a second crystal. And if I go here, I pay a third crystal. And because this is a 
giant star, as you can see, or a great star, this bigger one, I also mark one space on my wisdom track, which gets me closer to having more cards available under my journal. And then I can continue marking here and spending a fourth stardust and going, for example, here for a fifth stardust and even going here for a sixth one and marking another one great star on my wisdom card and then seven is here and for example eight is here and I can basically spend all my stardust on one card but once you are observing you can do it only on one card and you have to do one unbreakable chain and you spend as many crystals as you want so I spent all of them for example for the purpose of this demo now if you have any telescope tokens available to spend, you can always observe a card during the observation action. You can always observe a constellation, spend a few stardust crystals to mark a few stars, and then spend the telescope token to move in a different direction and move and create a different chain or move to a different card. So the telescope token allows you to do the observation action one more time. And you can spend as many telescope tokens as you want and as you have during a single turn. Now, another rule for observation is that if a card was already marked by a player, then you can start from any star which is neighboring to a star that was already marked. So if I was a second player, I could start here, here or here, for example, because I've got neighboring stars marked. And that's basically it for the observation action. And now the second action that you can do during your turn, and it's either or, so you do either the observation action or this new action which I'm talking about which is a rest action and the rest action has three steps. First step is that you fill out your pouch up to the limit which is marked on this track. So even if for example this was my second turn and I had one crystal left over I can take a rest action but this means that I fill up my pouch up to the maximum of five so I add four more crystals to it. So this is the max that I can fill in while I'm resting. The second thing that I do when I'm resting is that I can refresh all of the cards that I've used, which have the same element symbol in the upper left corner as the current turn. And this is the only way to refresh the cards. So for example, if I took a rest action now and I had some cards over here, I could refresh only the ones which have the water element symbol. And the last thing is that you advance the token during the rest action only. This token advances only during the rest action and it advances by one space. And if the token crosses this symbol on this element track, that means that you discard one card from the top of the deck into the discard, thus rushing the end of the game. And now, if this is a two-player game, there is one more thing that you need to do during the rest action, and we'll talk about it right now. Now, during the rest action in a two-player game, the resting player, after performing all three steps, so filling in the pouch, refreshing the cards, which match the symbol that was moved from, if any, moving the token, then the player takes the extra marker for the automated player. They look at the number in the element zone that the marker currently is. And this is the amount of stars they need to mark for the automated player on a card. And the way that you select which card is being marked is as follows. If there are any empty cards, then the player has to select one of the empty cards, so with, any, with no stars marked. If there are more than one such cards, then the player has to take the card which has more stars in a constellation. If there is still a draw, like in this case, the player can choose any of those two cards. And then you have to mark this number of stars following the normal rules. So for example, like this because this is a card that wasn't marked, so I need to start from the starting position. If, however, all constellations have been already marked by other players or by the automated player, then that player who rested and has to use the automated marker selects the card that has the most stars in a constellation, and in case of a draw, they can choose any of those, and 
also marks four stars if they can, because for example, I can select right now this card and mark only three stars because that's the only chain that I can do. So you mark as many as you can. And this gets us to the end of the action phase. So one of the two actions, you either observe, spending crystals to mark stars and spending telescope tokens to do additional observation actions, or you rest and you refresh your bag, you untap the cards with the same element symbol and you advance the marker on the element track and in a two-player game you also activate the automated player and you mark some stars for the automated player. And this gets us to the third phase which is the discovery phase. Now if during your turn any of the constellations have been finished either by you because you were the last player observing or maybe by the automated player in a two-player game I will bring the marker back for the automated player that constellation is discovered and if it was you as the active player who discovered this constellation who marked the last star this card is added below your journal as your card that you can use this ability of the card and you can tap it later to use the ability and remember that the limit of the cards you can have below your journal is this limit on this track so you, I can have three right now because I have the field here under the number three crossed out on the wisdom track so you add this card and then after you add this card you obviously add a new one to the deck and you count the number of helping players so you don't look at your own stars anymore that you've marked here but you look at all the other players stars that they have marked on the sheets and then the player who has the most stars and isn't you gets to select one of those boons so in this case it's five victory points two marks on this pouch track refreshing one card or getting six crystals then the next player who contributed the most after that player selects one of those boons that hasn't yet been selected so you can even cross the ones that already were selected out in this case and it goes on and on for all the players who are helping you discover this star so you as the player who collected the card because you've added the last star don't get any of those boons all the other players who are present on the card get something and in a two-player game there are two ways that a discovery phase can go down one is that you are adding the last star here to the card and you're collecting the card and then the automated player and the other player might be contributing if the contributing other player has more stars or the same number of stars as the automated player they can select any of those boons but if the automated player has more stars than the other contributing player then the contributing player can only select one of the two last boons so the two first ones are unavailable to them but in a two-player game the automated player can also be the last player to mark a star and in this case this card is being discarded it doesn't go to any player's journal but you check the contributing player still and you can still get the boons for being present on this card okay and after this discovery phase the turn ends for the current player and goes to the next player in turn order and then they decide whether they need to activate any abilities in the ability phase they choose one of their actions in the action phase they check the discovery phase whether they closed any of the cards and then we go to the next player and the next and the next and the next and that's basically how this game is played ladies and gentlemen and now after everybody has played a few rounds and we uncovered the game end card we finish the circle we do one more round and we score the end game so let's now talk about scoring so scoring is listed over here and it goes as follows you score the victory points equal to the number marked on the pouch track over here so five is the least that you can score for this you score the number of victory points equal to the number marked on the wisdom track so in this moment i would score three you score one victory point for every three stardust crystals left over in your pouch 
you score one victory point for every two stars that are left marked by you on the undiscovered constellations at the end of the game. You score the victory points, or fame as it is called, from every card that you have under your journal, so the ones collected by you, which are refreshed at the end of the game, so which are in a vertical position, not a horizontal one, so the active constellations they are called. And finally, you flip the final scoring card and you take a look at all the cards you've collected under your journal, whether active or horizontal because they were used, and you mark the element symbols on this grid. So for example, I have one water element, I would add it here, but let's hypothetically say that I had two more water element cards and I had one more fire element card and I had one more fire and one more green earth element card. So my scoring at the end of this table for the cards below my journal looked like this. Obviously, to have one, two, three, four, five, six cards here, I would have to be over here on the wisdom track, right? So those fields had to be marked. And then this table scores as follows. We look at each horizontal row and for the presence in this column, I get two points. So for this row, I will get two points. For this row, I will get zero. For this row, I will get two. And for this row, I would get six. And then we look at the vertical columns. If I have a vertical column with four axes, I get six points. If I have a vertical column with three axes, I get three points. Two and ones don't give me anything. And then I sum it up. Six plus two is eight, plus two is 10, plus nine is 19. So 19 additional points for this final scoring card. And each player has a different one. And you tally up all the points and the person who has the most wins the game and that's it. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. This was Astra from Mind Clash Play, the little brother of Mind Clash games. If you have any questions about the rules for two players or for more player counts, three, four, five, feel free to ask in the comment section below. For now, this is it from me. My name was Lone Vic. Again, this was Astra, a game of discovering constellations. And if you like what I'm doing here on the channel and you would like to support my work, please click the like button, subscribe and ring the notification bell to be notified about new videos on my channel. And this is it for today. Have a great day. Hope to see you soon back here again on my channel. Stay safe and bye-bye.